Shut up, compressor. Hey everyone, Matt here with Duke's Models, and welcome to episode 2 of the Tamiya F4B Phantom build. Now, last time we left off basically getting all of the ordnance racks and things like that pretty much sorted out and ready for paint. Since then, I've gone ahead and done a few small things off camera, nothing major. So on the Sidewinder rails here, I went ahead and placed some Mr. Surfacer 500 along the seam, smoothed it out with Mr. Leveling Thinner. I don't really necessarily want to erase the seam, I just want to be able to not look down here and see daylight through it. So I think we're in a pretty decent place there. The other thing that I've done, fucking compressor, is to lay some ammo black CA along this particular little panel join and this one here on the folded wing because those aren't really supposed to be there and so putting the black CA in sanding it smooth just filling it just to make sure that the ghost seams don't appear and priming and painting and all that kind of stuff so next up it's time to start priming some shit and for this I'm going to be using MRP's fine surface primer I don't use it all the time but it's really good at preserving detail and for something like the various weapon racks I think that makes some sense. Hopefully. Now one kind of frustrating thing about the MRP primer, it's useful too, but it's also frustrating when you first start spraying with it, is it goes down very thin. So if you're not careful, you can get pooling and fisheye and all that kind of stupid bullshit. Not fisheye, spidering. My bad. Okay, so in the midst of getting my various ordnance bits all primed up, my flying Leathernecks Mark 83s made their timely arrival. Now these things are interesting. Like the flying Leathernecks Sidewinder rails, these are 3D printed. So it's 3D printed UV curing resin. They came with, uh, you know, looking pretty good. The bomb bodies themselves had a little bit of, you know, that sort of... Uh, relief terrain map sort of a thing on them that some prints can get but a little swipe with some sanding sponge seems to have removed it at least from what i can see we'll see if that holds up with primer but basically you've got the bomb body you've got the rear conical fin which i'm not 100 percent sure these are exactly period accurate to vietnam but they're certainly close enough from the references i'm looking at and then we've got the various fuses and things like that. I will be going with these guys that just plug right into the front. Now to prime these, I'm going to try out some Mr. Mahogany Surfacer. Mainly because it's 1000 as opposed to 1500, just a little bit thicker, so any 3D printed shit will fill in a little better. But it's also brown, and brown is awesome for dealing with all of drab and things like that, which these bombs will be. Yep, see, I can see that relief showing up again. That's why I wanted the 1000, because I can build it a little bit thicker and then sand it back. And things should be pretty nice. But you can kind of see it in the reflection in places. So, we might have to build up a few coats. Okay, so now that the bombs have gotten their first coat of primer, I've gone ahead and sanded back, and as you can see, doing that reveals the various layer striations from the 3D print. 
kind of across the board. So now they've been sanded back and hopefully filled in between. It's time for another coat of Mr. Mahogany 1000. I'm going to hope that this is sufficient. If not, we can always come back in and hit it again and again and again. Okay, so while the Mark 83s are doing their thing, let's go ahead and paint up the LEU 3 pods. I'm starting out with Insignia White. Okay, cool. Next up, it's time for the triple ejector racks, and I'm going to be using MRP US Navy White. Slightly, slightly different tone than the Insignia White. Okay, so now that I've got the MERS, the TERS, and the LAU-3s painted up, at least with their first white coats, it's time to move them aside and do a little bit of work on the launcher rails, which need to be bare metal in here. And for this, I'm going with some MRP dark aluminum. I hope it'll work. If not, we can always swap out something else. Let them spray these first because they are over spraying like crazy. So then, basically, once these are dried overnight, essentially, I'm going to go ahead and mask off the edges and then spray the rest of this white, except for the uh, light gold gray that needs to go on the forward top portion of the pylons there. Okay, so while I've got metallics in the airbrush, I've gone ahead and added some white aluminum to the dark aluminum, basically, give us just, I guess, neutral aluminum. And now I'm going to go ahead and treat the front and rear caps of the LAU-3s. And there you have it. LAU-3s with the front and rear caps metalized. Still need to paint the warheads, but all in all, it's looking pretty good. All right, I'm on short time before I am off on vacation, but I want to do one last thing before I shut the bench down for a week. And that is to add another coat of primer to the Mark 83s. Now, these things are pretty slick, except one frustrating element that I seem to be running into a couple times on this build, or at least with the ordnance. The rear cone, it was substantially larger than the forward bomb body, so it took a bit of filing and some filling in there with some black CA to kind of get it where I wanted it. And it's still not... well, it... I don't know if it's perfect or not, we'll see. There's going to be a yellow band right here, so that should you know, help break up any sort of weirdness that's going on, but still needs to be reprimed.
Okay, so I'm back from a nice relaxing vacation in the Bahamas. There are spider webs all over the bench because I haven't been here in a week. And it is time to go ahead and get the ball rolling on the next phase of the ordnance and the pylons with some light gold gray. Navy and Marine F4s had the upper four bits of the inner pylons done in light gold gray as opposed to white. So let's go ahead and make that happen. Very exciting. Okay, so I've masked off the rails and the light gold gray, and now it's time to paint some white. So you get a sense of what's happening here. I'm going to go ahead and pause this, paint the rest of it, and then we'll pick right back up. Okay. So these have their insignia white down. Let's go ahead and reveal the light ghost or the light gold gray. And the launcher rails. Woohoo! Okay, so I've taken these Mark 83s about as far as I can while maintaining my sanity. And next up, it's time to start spraying some colors at them. First up, I want to go ahead and deal with the yellow stripes, because yellow stripes are always a huge pain in the ass, right? On these Mark 83s, there are two. There's one up here at the nose, just by the fuse, so basically coming to about here or so. And there's another one back here where the rear fin attachment fits to the main bomb body itself. Now I'm not about to start spraying yellow onto black and brown and this bare resin right here. Instead, I'm going to go through Mr. Color 63, pink. Pink is an awesome base for yellow. Okay, now it's time to swing back through with some orange yellow, which is my preferred yellow of choice for bomb stripes. Spray this over the pink. Look how nice and vibrant that is. Yay. I realize that in the video, this is going to seem like a quick jump cut, and boom, the bombs are ready. But from my perspective at the bench, it feels like this has been a long time coming. So I have the Mark 83s all ready to go, masked off. I've got the bands back here masked off with some Tamiya 2mm tape. The front, I found the easiest way was to grab some of these Ushi uh, vinyl circle masks, basically, and just shove it over the front secured in place with a bit of uh, liquid frisket. It's okay. It, you know, it's not perfectly aligned, I guess, but it's, it'll do the job. And now it is time to start putting some color down. And I'm going to start with US Helo Drab, which is way too dark, but it's where I want to go to at least start getting over some of the yellow that's going on here. And as I start to paint these bombs, something to keep in mind is I basically want the rear cone and fin section to be a more uniform, darker olive drab, and the main explosive part of the bomb, the stuff that sits outside in like storage dumps and whatnot, to be more faded and weathered and beat to shit. Okay.
Okay, now that I've got this established and up and running with the Helo Drab, it's time to move on to the main explosive body, and I'm going to start with some MRP-10 Brown Green. This is a fun little color. I think I used it on my F-104G. It does a very good job of like a lightish brown green kind of tone. Next up, we're moving in with some MRP Dunkelgeld. I really have no idea why this label's all fucked up, but hey, you know. Next, I'm bringing out the MRP 6K, and I am going to stipple this. Okay. Got to be careful to avoid just making it all dark again. <laughs> I've got a plan for that. I'm going to move into some olive drab, and for this I want to go ahead and use some AK Real Color. It's olive drab number 9. It's a very olivey drab. This is compared to the 34087 that is their rendition of, I guess, the more modern olive drab. This one is a lot drabbier, so interesting starting point. Okay, so we've got base olive drab. Now let's fuck it up. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this AK Real Colors Dunkle Gelb, which is a much gelbier, less dunkly Dunkle Gelb than the MRP. Probably gonna have to add some thinner to the airbrush cup too. Oh yes, that'll do. That is a good looking faded olive drab right there. So I think I'm going to keep one of these as this sort of established olive drab color. I like the way it looks. I'm definitely going to fade the others out though because then they'll have a little bit of interest alongside each other. Alright, next on this one I'm doing a thing where I have the MAC valve down here on the airbrush hose pulled pretty much closed, so when I spray, not much happens, but then when I let go, it gives me some good stuff, so, 
using this just to add some more of this color in a stipple fashion. Okay, next up I'm going to do some, I guess what I'll call like round robin stippling with different colors to build up additional sense of depth and just beat the shitness and all that good stuff. First up, Light Tacky from the MRP range, MRP 12. Now on this, I've got the Mac file pushed almost to the stops. So we're getting some nice coarse chunkiness going on with the uh, coverage here. Next up, a little bit of AK Light Green. Next up, some AK Dunkelgeld. And finally, back around to some Hilo Drab. Okay, now it's just a matter of dealing with the rear cone fin thing and then we should be in a pretty good place with the Mark 83s to at least unmask them and kind of keep the ball moving. And this is just AK Real Colors Olive Drab 34087. It's definitely a greener side of drab, but I think that'll work nicely with what we've got going on on the actual bombs themselves. Okay, let's do the backside. Ta-da! Four bombs. Okay, next up, it's time to take the shine off these things with some guns GX-113. This is their UV-protected version of their super awesome dead flat thing. Now, the thing I like about the guns GX is it does go dead flat, but it doesn't really do it in, like, a fading way. It's very weird. first put it down, it seems like nothing's happening. And just give it a few minutes, and as it dries, all that sheen just goes away. Now, as that does dry, I'm going to come back over the rear and probably put a like a semi mat back there on the cone, just to provide a little bit of sheen variance. Okay, so here we have four bombs all painted up, all glued together, and essentially just waiting for weathering. Okay, next up, before I break into the detail painting and weathering on the racks and on the rocket pods, I want to go ahead and get the decals placed. And let's go ahead and start with the LAUs, shall we? Let's move the racks out of the way. LAUs. Yippee. Now, I was going to use the Edward stencils because these are Edward cans, but we've got two problems. First of all, Edward stencils for rocket cans always seem to come as just like a loose decal sheet with a little protective piece of paper on top, right? 
But just like with the LAU-10s on my intruder, these LAU-3s have a problem. The sheet took half the stencils away. Great. Thanks, guys. On top of that, I figured I would consult the instructions to you know, see where the stencils go. And there's nothing anywhere on here about where they actually go. Cool. Thanks, guys. Super useful. So because of that, I'm going to dig into the stencils that came with the arrow bonus set. And the funny thing is, you know, these are LAU-3s, but it says LAU-61. But whatever, little stencils, and we've got a placement guide. So right over here, just off screen, I've got my water. Get the decals in there. I'm doing two of them at a time. I think that should be fine. All right, moving on to the triple ejector racks. This time, Edward actually does give you stencil placement. And these decals did not suffer from the cover sheet ripping everything off. But there is a randomly gigantic area wasted on the sheet. And Edward's crazy. Okay, so these are number three. And as you can see, I've already put them on this first one. So they're basically just going right there. Nothing too fancy. bit of Mr. Mark Setter, and in the places they're going. I'll be happy when I am done with these, because even though they are cool, they are fucking tiny. Tiny is a pain in the ass. Get them loosely placed. Move them where they need to be. Okay. Oof. So I'm going to get the next one done. I'm going to go ahead and get the multiple ejector racks done as well. Because honestly, they're pretty much the same as the TERS. Uh, they just don't have the numbers up front, but other than that, you know, same stencils and shit like that. And there's no point in watching this over and over and over and over again, so be right back. Okay, so a number of stencils later, and these things are looking pretty good. Next up, it's a matter of letting them set up overnight. I need to put a clear coat on them because they are a different sheen than the racks themselves. And then we can get into the detail painting, weathering, and all that stuff to make the racks and launchers look their part. So a challenge with handling these LAU-3s is that the rockets inside actually have silver warheads. So yeah, it's tempting to paint them blue as like training rounds, but at the same time, jets operating out of Da Nang and Chu Lai were not firing training rounds. So these need to be silver, but I want them to be somewhat different from the casing around them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some scale color white alchemy. This stuff is pretty cool. It gives a very gently whitish silver tone. And I'm just going to have to try to not go blind as I do this. I'm not too worried about spilling over to the edges because I am going to put a wash on top of this that will neatly define those things. I just want to make sure I get the warheads.
So you can get a sense of how this is going. Let me go ahead and get these painted up and we'll be right back. Okay, so now that the decals are done on the racks and the rocket pods, it's time to get back to the Mark 83s. And I've been getting them even dirtier with some oil brushers. As planned, I'm going to get three of them dirty in different ways. And I'm going to leave this one as a relatively fresh one just so we have a little bit of fun contrast going on, right? So oil brusher weathering on bomb bodies is a lot of fun because you really want them to look more tore up and splotchy and that means you don't have to worry as much about blending and all that kind of stuff. So what I do is, starting with buff, pull some out, take the bomb, and just kind of put the shit on it. Nothing fancy. And then we come in and we stipple like crazy. Stipple, 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 stipple. Because we're working with a flat surface, it will kind of bake in pretty quickly. It's important to move relatively fast. That's looking kind of like that, a little bit shitty, a little bit awesome. Some more shit on it. Now, it's a bit irregular looking, we're going to make it more regular, getting this brush damp. Thinner. And different areas get hit differently. So I'm not going to touch the whole thing. But I want to fuck up the edges a little bit. And just kind of get that stuff moving around. Not so bad. Let's do a little bit of medium gray, which is still a pretty warm color. Okay, so I've mixed together dark green, dark mud, and buff over here to get to a bit of an olive green. Next up is some Dela Rowney Sepia ink. This is an acrylic ink. I've got some right in here. Basically works by getting some on the sponge, dabbing almost all of it off. getting one of our bombs and just very lightly adding sepia to it. Now the reason that I'm using ink here is that once the ink dries it'll stay in place. It won't blend. So we'll have these little speckles essentially giving that 
just additional layer of interest. And where we want them heavier, we can kind of come in there and do that sort of a thing. If you do fuck it up, come over it real fast with your finger and just sort of blend it in. Okay, so once again, we're back to some ammo acrylic filters with some olive drab. Now, I've already gone ahead and brushed it overall on this one bomb. And I want to leave one in this just really nasty, pale state. But the other one, I want to do some sponging with. Oh, yeah. Nifty. So now I've got three bombs with different shades, different tones. I think what I'm going to do next, once these dry up overnight, is I'm going to come in and I'm going to mask off the yellow bands again, and I'm going to paint the aft bodies because that darker AK real color olive drab just does not look anything like olive drab to me. It looks more like a field green kind of a thing. So I'm going to mask those off and respray them. Okay, next up, it's time to go back to a magic wash, not for the bombs. They're in a happy place. But for our rocket tubes. Now this magic wash is water, all clad aqua gloss, Derivan Matisse surface tension breaker, and a few drops of Tamiya rubber black. All very exciting things. So what I'm gonna do, you guys have seen this before, so it shouldn't be anything too wild and crazy. So just gonna brush this in here. Let it make friends with all these holes. It's basically like that, let those do their thing. And it's probably also a good time to go ahead and get this stuff started on the multiple ejector racks. So I know that the white is really tough to see on the screen, to see the differences, but man, it's, uh, the Magic Watch is really working a number on the multiple ejector rack here. Okay, so the Magic Watch is looking pretty solid on the MERS and TERS, and on the faces of the LAU-3s. Next, I want to deal with the cones and fins on these Mark 83s. Now, no less an expert on the subject than J.D. Bybee informed me that the darkness is just fine, but I'm still just not buying this particular flavor of olive drab that AK is putting down. I mean, it feels... You know, they say that this is... 34087, which is kind of the standard FS for all of drab these days, but that looks a shitload darker to me. You know, I mean, this is the MRP flavor, not even close. So I'm not going to go that light because I think the MRP is a bit too light, but I've got some Hilo drab that'll at least take this darkness level, which I'm okay with, and get the brown into it, because right now my problem is that this just looks like dark green. It doesn't look like drab in any real meaningful sense. And for the next two, I'm going to go ahead and take that kilo drab and add a little bit of regular olive drab to it. Not too much, just enough to tweak it slightly so that we've got some variability happening.
yeah, I buy those colors a lot more. Cool. Now the airbrush and move on. Okay, so next, now that the MRP has restored these things to some sheen, I want to knock them back a bit. I want to go ahead and get past the magic wash on the racks and dull everything down a little bit. So for that, I'm going to be using some MRP semi-matte. Clear some space. And now that I've got the semi-matte applied on the aft side of the bombs, it's time to go ahead and bring in some straight-up matte for the bomb bodies. Okay, so there we have it. Some bombs, some rocket pods, some ejector racks. Put them on the side here so you can see a better view. And the multiple ejector racks as well. All looking pretty snazzy. Fantastic. I've got a few more things I want to deal with on the ejector racks. But other than that, I think we are pretty close to the end of ordnance here. Okay, next up, I want to dirty up the racks a little bit more with some chipping. And I'm going to go about this a slightly different way from the way that I normally would on aircraft. Because with aircraft, typically I do hairspray chipping. But we've already got these things all nice and white. We've got markings on them, they're weathered. And one of the things that's kind of common on TERS and MERS is the nose that's in the airflow all the time gets kind of chipped up. Same with like the leading edges of stuff. Again, stuff that's in the airflow or stuff that's being knocked about by ground crew. And a lot of times it shows metal, sure, but it will also show zinc chromate. And so I have gone ahead and mixed up a little bit of that using a bunch of Vallejo 7953 flat yellow and one single drop of 7890 refractive green. Dump in a bit of AK third generation thinner and we get this little slurry. Now to go ahead and get shit onto the nose and other areas, I'm going to dip the stir stick in here and just wipe that on a sponge. And then go ahead and do the stabby stabby stab stab thing to remove a bunch of it. Take the triple ejector rack. And the thing about the Vallejo stuff is if it fucks up, it's easy to remove. So. There, just like that. So there we've got the chipping on the nose. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the brush. The brush is going to let us do. Go ahead and here. Get some different areas. Next up, we're going to go with some Ammo Steel, this lovely metallic number, to put a little bit of bare metal on the inside of what we've been doing here with the zinc chromate.
Uh, this is a little bit of stage makeup. Like, the real things weren't always quite this dinged up. But, you know, if we want the visual interesting to show through the rest of the build, these guys need to have something to stand out on their own. So, maybe dialing this up just a hair. Okay, so now we're at the fun part, where it's time to start connecting ordnance to racks. Before this, I'm starting over with fresh wire inserted into the rocket pods and bombs, and things like that. And now we're going to walk through how to literally attach this shit, right? So, we've already got the pins here that are glued in. All it takes is like a drop of CA, not much more. Now I'm going to put a little bit on the head of each of these wires. And this is just beading wire. I forget the exact gauge. I basically just grabbed something that'll have enough sturdiness to keep its shit together. But still be flexible enough that I can bend it as needed. And then... Finding the holes. And plugging it in. Where possible, I like to cut these long and then trim them back. Um, you know, with multiple ejector racks, it's always tough to tell. Let's see, these actually fit, even though they feel long. So, yay us. All right, so after all that, here is the finished ordinance for the F-4B Phantom. Again, in summary, flying Leathernecks Mark 83 bombs, painted and faded up to represent the faded, dinged up bomb bodies that you see in archival footage and whatnot from Phantoms at Da Nang and Chu Lai, with the more clean, non-faded rear cones and fins. We've got Edward multiple ejector racks and triple ejector racks with stencils. They've been dirtied up with a magic wash. They've been detail painted in places with like the tubing and a few bolt heads and other fasteners picked out. And they've had the fronts scuffed up with Zeke Chromate, which is a Vallejo mix, and then some ammo steel. And finally, in here we have the Edward LAU-3s, which have also been, you know, painted white. They've had stencils put on. Front and rear in dark aluminum. And then I used Scale 75's Scale Color White Alchemy to pick out the warheads up front and a magic wash to ring them out. So with that, it's time to bring Episode 2 of the F-4B Phantom Build to a close. And honestly, the timing couldn't be better, because look what showed up in the mail today. <laughs> so in part three, it will be all about the sweet, sweet cockpit and putting these lovely things into it. So stay tuned for that. Hope the extended tour of getting the ordinance ready was a useful and helpful one. And I will catch y'all later. <laughs>